The Chang'e 5 lunar mission is the capstone of efforts made by the Chinese National Space Administration to launch a spacecraft to the moon and transfer material back to Earth for further study. This will be China's first attempt at a sample return program, and the probe is the first to give back lunar materials since the Soviet Union's Luna 24 project in 1976. Part of the Chang'e series of lunar probes, launched by the China National Space Administration, or CNSA, Chang'e 5 will be the fifth mission to the moon. The series of missions, dubbed after a Chinese goddess of the moon, would gradually expand their technological capabilities in preparation for future human landings. In order to explain the formation of youthful volcanoes on the cooling moon two billion years ago, a Chinese team investigated lunar materials brought back by China's Chang'e 5 mission. In this video, we'll be talking about China's moon mission samples and related theories. What are the major equipments of Chang'e 5? What progress has been made by the Chang'e 5 mission? What does China hope to learn from Chang'e 5? All four parts of the Chang'e 5 mission were launched together and made the trip to the moon as one spacecraft. The lander was disported from the orbiter and successfully landed on the moon and equipped with a drill and scooping equipment. There's an ascender perched above the lander. Then there's the ascender. The collected lunar material has been transferred to a storage compartment on board the Ascender. With the push of a button, the Ascender could leave the Moon's surface and head for a rendezvous with the orbiter in lunar orbit. Instead, Ascender deorbited and crashed back to the Moon after sample transfer to prevent it from becoming space junk. There's the orbiter. After the Ascender had delivered its cargo of samples to the orbiter, the latter departed the Moon's orbit, returned to Earth's, and dropped off the returner shortly before touching down. And then there's the returner. The returner used a technique known as skip re-entry to enter the atmosphere and then bounce off it once making a conventional re-entry. On November 23, 2020, a Long March 5 rocket lifted out from the Wenchang Space Launch Center in Hainan Province with the Chang'e 5 probe. The spacecraft has four modules and a total mass of 8,200 kilograms. Two of these modules have stayed in lunar orbit. On December 1st, the ascending vehicle and sample collector landed on the moon near the enormous Mons Rumker. The peak may be found in Oceanus Procellarum, a large volcanic plain studied by several other lunar missions, Apollo 12 among them. China currently has four spacecraft on the moon, with Chang'e 5 being one of them. The other three are Chang'e 3, which landed in 2013, and Chang'e 4, which landed in January 2019, along with the U-22 rover on the moon's far side. Just hours after touching down, Chang'e 5 immediately went to work. In contrast to the samples that the Apollo astronauts brought back from the moon that dated back 3 billion years, the rocks that were found in the region surrounding Mons Rumker are thought to have been formed only 1.2 million years ago. Information like this could shed light on why this section of the moon experienced geological activity after volcanism had ceased in the majority of parts of the moon. What we learned from the mission's successes also will inform future attempts to bring humans to the moon. Liu Ran, director of the CNSA's Lunar Exploration and Space Program Center, told media that the successful rendezvous and docking along with the landing and takeoff that came before it had established a solid technical basis for China's future missions of deep space exploration and a crewed lunar mission. New evidence for volcanic activity late in the moon's history has been uncovered through analysis of lunar materials brought back by China's Chang'e 5 moon mission. Unlike the Apollo and Luna samples from the moon, which date back more than 3 billion years, the Chang'e 5 samples expected to be brought back in late 2020 will confirm remote sensing data showing that the rocks in the vicinity are just 2 billion years old. New Chang'e 5 data published in Nature seems to rule out the ideas that relatively high water content or even the existence of radioactive, heat-producing materials in the lunar interior could have fueled volcanism at a late stage in the life of some areas of the moon. Instead, young lunar volcanism may have resulted from fusible, readily melted components, according to a team of researchers led by Chen Yi from IGGCAS. Relatively recently, the lunar mantle has melted, which can be accomplished by either increasing the temperature or decreasing the melting point. It would help to have a rough idea of the pressure and temperature at which the recent volcanism began. According to Chen, 
27 clasts of Chang'u 5 basalt were compared to Apollo basalts using a series of fractional, crystallization, and lunar mantle melting simulations. They discovered that the calcium oxide and titanium dioxide levels in the fresh magma obtained by Chang'u 5 were higher than in the older magmas collected by Apollo. Late-stage lunar magma cumulates, which are rich in calcium and titanium, melt more easily than their earlier counterparts. Dr. Su Bin, the study's first author, remarked, This is an interesting conclusion, demonstrating a large contribution of late-stage lunar magma ocean cumulates to the Chang'u 5's volcanic production. Findings from this study could shed light on the moon's thermal and magnetic evolution, and they provide evidence for the first plausible mechanism to account for the moon's youthful volcanism in light of the recently returned Chang'u 5 samples. The Chang'u 5T1 robotic lunar mission took off on October 23, 2014, to test the atmospheric re-entry capabilities of the Chang'u 5 mission's capsule design. The DFH-3A service module stayed in Earth orbit until January 13, 2015, when it was moved to the lunar orbit via the Earth-Moon L2 route. There, it's using its last 800 kilograms of fuel to conduct tests of maneuvers essential to future lunar missions. The European Space Agency, or ESA, Kourou Station in French Guiana has been used to provide tracking for the Chang'u 5 mission. Since the mission's inception, the European Space Agency has been keeping tabs on the spacecraft and standing by to assist China's ground stations should anything go wrong. The mission control crew in Beijing has been able to assess the spacecraft's health and orbit thanks to information from the Kourou Station. On December 16, 2020, Chang'u 5 was brought back to Earth Tracking efforts were bolstered by ESA's Maspaloma station in the Canary Islands, run by the Instituto Nacional de Técnica Aeroespacial, or INTA, in Spain. Science journalist Bob McDonald made a connection between the Chinese lunar rover Chang'u 5 and the Soviet Luna program, which launched Luna 15, Luna 16, and Luna 24 to the moon. Prior to the return of the Apollo 11 crew in July 1969, the Luna 15 rover attempted to collect a sample of lunar soil. After an unsuccessful landing attempt, the potential for a propaganda coup was lost. Two more sample return missions, Luna 22 in 1972 and Luna 24 in 1976, were successful after the initial Luna 16 mission returned around 100 grams of lunar soil. McDonald thinks China has started a new moon race, with robots possibly in the lead this time. According to Bradley Parrott, the chief of Aviation Week Network's Asia-Pacific Bureau, the United States and the Soviet Union's moon race in the 1960s was motivated by propaganda meant to show the world who was the stronger nation. According to Parrott, the Chang'u project was similarly motivated by propaganda usefulness, albeit this time it was aimed at the Chinese people themselves. The government of China supported this endeavor to prove to the Chinese people that they were capable of achieving great things. Thank you for watching. Provide us with your valuable feedback if you enjoy the video. Also, take a minute and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned!